nobody wants to live in their car and nobody wants to live on the street. But if you tell them you're living in your car, they look at you like an addict. Even if you are, you know, if somebody is, it's still, they can't get help. You know, they want to get help, but they can't. Eight months ago, I lost my apartment uh, due to flooding, some major stuff in the building. The, the rents, they doubled. I went crazy. I couldn't believe how things went from $1,200 to $1,700, $1,800. So I tried to get some help right away from pretty much every organization I could find on the internet. And, and every single one of them said there was no funding, there was too long a wait list, there was uh, no availability and I was sold to sleep in my car. All right, bud. I was scared to death. Okay. I mean, the anxiety was the worst because when you think, you know, you're going to be on the street, literally go, what am I going to do? I don't have anything to look forward to. You don't. You kind of lose hope. Yeah. Uh, in eight months, I think I aged about 10 years. I look in the mirror and I'm like, wow, <laughs> last year I didn't look like this. It was scary. I mean, I have my dog, I have Sammy. If I didn't have him, I don't know what I would have done. Because it was scary as it was when I was sleeping in the car. Hearing a noise or somebody coming by, you know, who knows, are they going to break in? Or, you know, all those kind of thoughts going through your mind. So I went through that for about eight and a half months until I met Christine. So I first put her in a motel uh, and then I encouraged and another advocate to ask for help for her to get her housing voucher because she was told in January that it would be at least two years before she got a housing voucher. It's pretty much always that way. And, and even then when someone gets a housing voucher, being able to utilize it is next to impossible. If you don't have a car and you don't have a deposit and you don't have a phone, you can get the voucher that expires in three months with a one month extension, but you have no way to go use it. I didn't realize how hard it was. You can go through so many different apartment buildings or management companies or people and they go, oh no, we don't take it or we can't take your voucher or there's always an excuse. And I can see how hard it is for most people and how discouraging because I mean, I was discouraged the first three or four turned me down. The whole thing is a difficult situation. Every homeless person out there is different. It's not true that they're all drug addicts and thieves. It's not true that this is a lifestyle that they want to live. Some of them have given up and have accepted this lifestyle, but you have to be each person as you find them. Uh, I've known people who are on the streets who are engineers, who are doctors, who are lawyers. Um, people fall on hard times. I was a stunt woman for 25 years. I did wrestling uh, at the beginning. And when I was 17, I worked at Knott's Berry Farm on the stunt team. Um, then I went into movies, TV, TV shows. After I got injured, I knew I couldn't do it anymore, so I went back to school for radio broadcasting. And then I started working country radio for about 10 years. And I loved it. Loved it. But then, you know, what, eight years ago, nine years ago, radio went out and podcasts came in. So that was it. So, yeah, and, and I kept working as long as I could. I just can only work a certain amount of time before I need to lay down. I have arthritis everywhere. My back, my hips, they're always hurting. I have to switch sitting constantly. There are shooting pains, there's stabbing at times, uh, nerve damage, neuropathy. I can walk one day and then maybe the next I can barely walk. So I've been looking for places. Um, I found one place that I'm working on right now. Um, we're waiting for the, the inspection to go through. So as soon as that goes through and it, it's all okay, I will have a place to move into. I found out two days ago that I didn't get the apartment. I, I don't really know what happened, so. I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> I, I'm not one of those that's going to cause any issues. I, I just really, I didn't get it and uh, it's fine. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't meant to have a beach place right now, even though it was the perfect one. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I'll deal with it.
I was pretty upset. I mean, I'm still upset. They sh and then yesterday they showed me some other little place. It's not very good, but it's a place and I want a place. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm not counting my chickens before they're hatched anymore, you know, until the day I'm literally told you can come and pick up the keys. I just, I, I don't want to get my hopes up again. And I haven't done that in a long time, got my hopes up. So I don't want that to happen again. So um, I can afford to stay here about another month. Um, I'm looking at other places. Um, I have been still. I got right back out there and, you know, um, went and looked at that one yesterday. And I have a couple other places that have been calling, you know, but I just don't want to stop looking you know, for any reason. I want to get this done. I don't want to go through this anymore.